Okay, Shadi Sir, good afternoon. My name is Captain Vinod Shankar Nair, and I am honored, privileged, and grateful to you all for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. So before I start, I'd like to give special thanks, uh, firstly to Mr. Abhishek Patrick, who's coordinated everything and invited me here. Where is Mr. Abhishek? Okay, there you are. Thank you very much. Next to Mr. Christopher Agnello Francis, who was again here for a while. Thank you, Mr. K.V. Vincent, sir. Thank you so much. And of course, your wonderful wife, Mary. Uh, she was right here. Uh, Dr. Vinita Kamran, Mrs. Rama Karthik, Dr. Jerry Arathun, and Dr. G. Emmanuel Chairman. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you to this lovely August audience. Now, before I start my topic, my topic is a slice of life. When this whole event was being planned and discussed, I must tell you I was very honored because I have been doing training for close to 30 years. I have trained around 500,000 people for the last 28 years across the world. Teachers, to me, the whole concept of teaching is like a water filter. It's like an aqua guard. And our next generation is the water that filters through. The quality of our next generation is completely dependent on teachers. What teachers let go of, what teachers release, is what is going to be our future society. And that is beyond economics, it is beyond religion, it is beyond other normal things. So the role of teachers is extremely important. What is even more important than teachers is principles. Because principles are the ones who control the teachers. So who's going to control the principles? And principles face as much baggage or they have as many challenges, as much difficulty as does a student or as does a teacher. Please correct me if I'm wrong. However, since the buck stops with you, there's very little you can run to this side or that side. The buck stops with you, you have to handle all the pressure, all the problems, all the challenges entirely on your own. So today's session, the next one hour, is not about systems or processes. It is purely about you. I'm dedicating the next one hour of this session only to you, to help each one of us in this room deal with whatever baggage, whatever problems come our way. There are many issues that we face, especially in the field of education. Someone mentioned blue whale in the last session. God knows what will come after blue whale. There's so many things we have no idea about. Security, internet, pornography, mobile phones, then of course personal issues, finance, health, your own family issues, all this, your own prejudices, you have to put all this aside and be a principal. You have to put your own issues aside, your own stress, your own health and be a principal. So today what I am going to do is, over the next one hour, I am going to share with you an incident. This is a real life incident and it took place in 1991. And I'm going to share this incident with you with a very, very specific purpose. Once I share this story, this incident with you, I'd like us to have a discussion about the story. And we will see what we can relate to in our personal lives, our personal problems, financial problems, health problems, work problems and come back to this story that I'm talking about and find our solutions. So may I start? Yes, yes everyone? Yes. Okay, okay. So let's get started. This story is not connected to education at the surface level. However, I'm sharing this story with you because it is a life incident and you will face various issues in your life which require various solutions. This is a situation which happened many, many years ago 
and was life changing for all those people involved. Over the last 20, 25 years, I have shared this story with many audiences across the world, not just in India. I have had people give up smoking. I have had people change life habits and take some positive steps towards their own life growth. Okay? So shall we shall I get started? Yes. Okay, please make mental or physical notes so that you can refer to it as we go on. Shall I get started this side? Miss? Shall I get started? Madam? Excuse me. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Shall I get started? Okay, thank you. All right. You are all familiar with Indian borders? You are familiar with something called the line of control? Yes? Okay. So this incident took place on 21st of August 1991 along the line of control of India. So there was a unit from the Punjab regiment which was posted along the line of control. Now this line of control is in Kashmir, is in a place called Punch if you are familiar with this area. And line of control is a very, very, um, it keeps changing every one hour, every six days. It's a question of opportunity. Whenever you get an opportunity, you aggressively dominate the enemy. The minute you relax, the enemy aggressively dominates you. So it's a very, very tough and constantly liquid situation. So along this line of control near Punch, there was always a lot of stress, there was always a lot of firing, things like that, that always happened. However, on 21st of August 1991, suddenly there was a third party that decided to attack in between this line of control. Besides the two countries that were fighting each other, suddenly the weather decided to intervene. And it started raining heavily. There were thunderstorms, there was ice storms, there was lightning from the sky. And suddenly parts of the mountains of the line of control were decimated. In a period of around 14 to 15 minutes, there were huge explosions, almost as if it was a war going on and parts of the mountains fell apart. Over the next three hours, the whole line of control border had redefined itself. Suddenly, there were like, supposing this is a hill range, suddenly two ends of the hill just collapsed and we were left with one vertical monolith. Places where there was nothing, now there was a mountain. Places where there was a valley, now there was, it was all covered up. So suddenly the situation changed. Now, our neighbors, who were also on the line of control, they were very intelligent, very aggressive, and very quick. They also saw the changing situation. So they immediately sent some of their troops. They said, this is the best chance. Go and capture the Indian post, take over. Now the specific Indian post that they were trying to capture was being run by a major AK Singh. And half his men fell off in a avalanche. He was left with just half. And it was a hill, like I said. Two sides of the hill suddenly collapsed. What was left now from a full mountain was a finger. This was earlier called ring contour of the mountain. It suddenly started being called finger because that's all that was left. Now this finger suddenly became strategically very, very important. Because of the collapse of other hills, it suddenly gave a dominating view into both India and the neighboring country. So it suddenly had huge importance. Major A.K. Singh put up a huge fight, but the enemy was very smart, they were very resourceful, well planned, they captured everything and they took over the Indian post. The interesting thing about both the posts is, the Indians were killed and removed, the enemy who came and took over the post with all their intelligence and all their planning was also trapped because the end of the mountain collapsed. So they also could not go back to their own nation. But since they had taken command of the post, they started directing artillery fire from their country into ours. And then we had Punch district, we had Shahpur district being shelled, civilians being killed, and the brigade commander from behind called up the battalion commander. He said, I don't care what you do. Get that post back. It is vital because 
And if I remember right, there was a school bus that was hit in the shelling, in, uh, near Poch Kalai. They said, do whatever you have to just get it back. The commanding officer who was in charge of that area was a Colonel Dragon. His name was Dragon, that was his nickname. His real name was Mirza Yavar Bey. Absolutely brilliant man. In this kind of chaos, he didn't even have officers or jawans to send. So he, whatever few troops were already in that area, <coughs> were stuck. There was not enough time to send reinforcements. He had one new captain, a captain Stephen Albuquer, 19 Punjab. His nickname was Ice. Now Ice was a captain who had a lot of experience from Sri Lanka, IPK. He had fought the, the, the uh, LTT in Sri Lanka and he was a battle-hardened veteran. But he had never seen mountains. And now we are talking about serving at 20,000 feet altitude where mountains are completely different from jungles. So he was battle-hardened but he didn't know anything here. He was new to the unit, he didn't know the Jawans. So disadvantages and advantages. But Colonel Dragon said, this is the best guy, let him go. Trusted his gut. So Captain Stephen Albuquer, that's ICE, was put on the first vehicle and transported straight to the line of control. Being young, fit, fabulous guy, he ran his way through the opposition, ran through the line of control and managed to make it to the border post. So once he went there, he took stock of the situation. It was a very, very difficult situation. Please follow me here on the board and try and explain it to you. Okay? Can you see this whiteboard, everyone? Okay. So what was left of the border was of all the mountains, we had just one mountain sticking like this. We had enemy troops here, enemy troops here, and enemy troops here. And this side was India. Okay? So Captain Ice had to lead a team of people who had survived the tragedy to go and attack phase one, then phase two, and then phase three, and get this whole mountain peak back into Indian territory. So he called the local Jawan in charge, the sergeant, and he said, Sabko Vidao, I want to brief. He said, since I don't know all the troops personally, I'm not going to command you to come to action. I'm going to ask for volunteers. So Captain Ice stood in front of his soldiers, Punjab Regimental Boys, 19 Punjab, and he, since he didn't know them well, he introduced himself, and he told them, this, this, this has what has happened. This, this, this is what the enemy has done. And now, this, this, this is what we have to do. These are the risks involved. These are your chances of coming back safely in one, play, in one piece. So volunteers, please raise your hands. Very, very tough mission. ICE was delighted. Almost all the Jawans jumped up and raised their hands. So we are coming with you. Thank you. So really, really impressed. However, however, as Captain Ice looked at the audience, there was one boy, all the Jamans were seated cross-legged on the ground, one boy sitting right there at the back and right, whose hand did not come up. His hand was down. He kept looking here and there. He was hesitant. After a couple of minutes of hesitation, seconds of hesitation, his hand came till here. Then he scratched his head. Then slowly he went in here and then his hand came up. Now when his hand came up, the Jawan sitting next to him saw him and he tapped the other guy. He said, look at him, look at him. Within minutes, in such a stressful situation of life and death, everyone, all the Jawans, turned around, they looked at this man and they were laughing at him. Now since Ice was new to the unit, he didn't know the history. So he asked that Chote Lal Sahib, he said, why is everyone laughing at this boy? He is volunteering to go on a life-threatening mission to save his country. Why will you laugh at him? So Subedar Chote Lal gave a response. He 
sense of kosela that boy he has 9 years of experience for 9 years he has not seen active combat he is a batman are you familiar with this term batman okay batman is in the indian army every officer is given a batman or a sahib whichever one you want to call him he polish your shoes bring milk drop your kids to school he is a home helper because these people are home helpers they are normally even excused of regular training and regular duties so this boy's name ironically his name was shaitan singh <laughs> and shaitan singh had 9 years of experience 2 years more he could just finish his service and go and he had not fired a rifle not seen combat he was a batman that to a major ak singh who died um, and now he wants to come on such a high profile mission so of course they laugh at so i said okay forget about it then he decided to interview every single soldier to make sure he had a highly motivated good team on such a crazy attack so they made a small makeshift place where he interviewed every jawan so he interviewed them he spoke to them made sure they are with him as each jawan went by the tent flap opened and shaitan singh walked in so i asked him himself he said shaitan singh you have 9 years of experience when is the last last time you fired a rifle so shaitan singh said 2 3 years back said why do you want to come and get yourself killed on an operation like this few years more go back to your family live with your family play with your children and their children enjoy your old age why do you want to sacrifice yourself so at that moment shaitan singh suddenly became very serious he looked at captain ice in his eyes and he said sir you have to take me on this mission there's no choice he said sir you are right i lead a comfortable life but i did not join the army to be a, a batman i joined to be a soldier i was assigned to be a batman and it is my religion is a sardar it is my religion to do my duty 100% therefore i am 100% batman no one has found fault in my batman service that's why i have been a batman for 9 years and i will always be the best batman i can but that's not why i came here says i came here to be a soldier now unfortunately for 9 years everyone in this unit they see me and they see batman they don't see soldier i have been labeled i have been put into a box but i am not that box i am not that label you are right in 3 4 years i'll retire and go home when i go home one day today or tomorrow my grandchildren will ask me what i did and what's my answer polish shoes boil milk did what this is sir you are new to this unit you are the only man who sees me as a soldier not as a batman if you don't give me this chance no one else will ever give me this chance please i beg of you i will not let you down give me this chance i looked at shaitan singh and he said be very careful what you ask for you just may get it and today is one day when your dream has come true you are coming with me on the operation when the other jawans saw shaitan singh in the attack line up they started looking at ice saying this guy is mad why will you take on a sahib you're not going there to play golf or on a picnic you're going for battle but anyway they kept quiet now our operation starts before our operation starts colonel mirza yawar bey dragon brief captain ice and he warned him he said see we have no air support there's no helicopters you have artillery fire the big guns and you are on your own the rest of us can't come to you he said my only warning to you ice is that this enemy is extremely intelligent do not take them for granted so i said yes sir and assault started okay so this is we hours of the night phase 
of the operation started here. There was a set of small bunkers that needed to be attacked and cleared. Now, as we started our attack, the Indian Jawans had surprise on their side. They were also comparatively rested compared to a battle, I mean a full night of attack. So everything on their side and all set, fully motivated and the Indian army is a volunteer army. No one's forced to go in there and it's a very value based army. Indians are farmers by nature. So since we are farmers, we would rather give up our lives than our land. So with that kind of motivation, we started our first attack. The enemy was expecting us and like we said, they are not stupid. They fought back. There was a vicious fight. The enemy fought back with whatever they had. Our boys attacked with everything they had. Huge conflict for maybe an hour or two and suddenly the enemy decided to fold up. They packed up, they started running away. Some of them died, some of them were captured. Many of them ran away. And where do they run? They run, of course, up the hill only. So Captain Ice was this, delighted. He said, now this enemy is on the run. He picked up the phone. He called Colonel Dragon and he says, Sir, phase one is a success. What should I do now? So Colonel Dragon fired him back. He said, phase one is a success. Cash in on the momentum. Enemy is running, let him run. Go for phase two. Don't stop. But remember, this enemy is dangerous. So Captain I said, yes, of course, I should cash in on the momentum, let me go. And he continued the attack. So the attack went into phase two. Phase two, if you notice, the slope is a lot sharper. Now, there were troops from phase one and phase two both gathered here. The enemy was no longer surprised. They knew that we were coming. Fight was much, much more intense. The enemy fought back with everything they had. Our guys were also getting tired, getting hungry, but we kept at it. Eventually, when it was real head to head, again the enemy folded and ran away. And again this time they all just took off up the hill. Captain Ice picked up the radio set, called Colonel Dragon and he says, Sir, phase two is also a success. Shall I cash in on the momentum? Shall I go for phase 3 while they are still running? Let me knock them off. So Colonel Baig said, no you stupid boy, this enemy is very very intelligent. Do you think they are running because they are scared of you? Do you really think you have beaten them up? Says, no. First they did not know how many of you are there. They did not know where you are coming from. Now they know how many of you are there. Where you are coming from, they know you are exhausted because you have done two separate phases. They know your weapons and all three, phase one, two and three, they are waiting for you in triple strength on top. They can see what you are doing. Don't attack. Stay back, plan, use your go and brain and then attack. So Captain Steven Albuquerque decided, okay, down to reality. This enemy is not scared of me, let me use my brain. So he sat down and they did some planning. Now whenever you do a military attack, uh, you need to know where is the enemy on that mountain top. What are their weapons? Where are the weapons put? <coughs> How motivated are they? Where do we attack from? So for that kind of information, we do something called faint attacks. That's a fake attack. Instead of assaulting them, we'll send one Jawan with one rifle who will fire from here and go running away. So the enemy thinks the attack has come here. They fire back with everything. So we sit back and we take notes, saying that eastern side they have a heavy machine gun firing at so and so angle, like that. So we did a lot of our recce, paint attacks, got a proper plan chopped out for how we are going to assault this peak. When the plan was fully chopped out, Captain Ice kept leading the way up and they slowly made their way to the top of the hill. Okay? So now they reached the top of the hill. If this is where the enemy was, there's one stretch before the hill comes down. Okay? This is around a 50 
to 100 meter stretch on the top of the hill before the enemy bunkers. So Captain Ice and the Indians with heavy firing, with heavy shelling managed to make it till here. And they were the last 50 to 100 meters before you start your assault. So they were all tucked in, ready, planned their weapons, checked their equipment, all set to assault. Now, Captain Ice had done such attacks before in Sri Lanka. He knew that once you start a full frontal assault towards the enemy, that is here, you are completely exposed. There is no way that the enemy will ever allow you to go back or come forward if he stops you in between. So the secret is that once you start an assault, you cannot stop. If you stop, they will never allow you to come forward If you and they will never allow you to escape. So we are all set. The enemy's weapons were identified, everything was done. Attack had to start from here. Okay? Everyone with me so far? Yes, yes no? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So all steady, ready, equipment go. Finally, Captain Ice gave the signal. Launch attack. As our soldiers started running, expectedly the enemy opened fire. This 50 to 100 meter stretch was open. Our boys were getting killed, some were running through, but the assault started. Captain Ice also started assaulting, running along. And suddenly, as they were running through this exposed patch, the 50 meters, suddenly, out of nowhere, least expected, left hand corner of the hillside, there was a huge thundering sound. Like Colonel Beg had warned, this enemy was extremely intelligent. Through all the fault and uh, failed attacks, false attacks, they had kept quiet and hidden a huge heavy machine gun called a BMG, a Browning machine gun, on that left hand corner of the hill. And they had not given it away. This machine gun is before World War II time. Fires 50 mm caliber bullets, so big. 250 of them in one minute. So, if you happen to be in the way of one of these shells, you are shredded. You are like sweet corn and soup. That's what's left. So, this enemy had very strategically kept a BMG, Browning machine gun, hidden in the left corner of the hill. And as our Jawan started their final assault, this gun swept through killing them. So, the first few Jawans were torn apart. The rest hit the ground flat. Captain Ice was running along the first few. He was also caught completely unaware in the open. Three Jawans before him, Ice watched as the first two died. The died as if they were cut into pieces. The third one who was in front of him got hit. Ice also got hit. They all fell down. The entire Indian assault stopped. We were caught in the middle of that open stretch. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. The worst thing that should never happen, happened. Our assault stopped. Captain Ice managed to regain his consciousness. He looked around, said, what's going on? So his sergeant told him, sir, we are pinned down. The enemy has us. There is nothing we can do. So Ice himself was barely conscious and he was thinking, what do I do? How do we get to that bunker and destroy it? And suddenly, as he was thinking, and all the Indians were pinned down, they heard an insane, crazy screaming coming from behind them on the Indian side. They turned around and they saw one of our own Indian Jawans getting up, rifle in hand, screaming and running full force against the enemy. Now, you call it divine intervention. Maybe God decided to intervene. Maybe it was good luck. Maybe it was destiny. Call it whatever you want. This one Jawan running at the enemy, not knowing where to run, he ran straight towards the BMG. And like I said, call it divine inter intervention, call it God's will. Not one bullet hit him. Not a single bullet hit him. He ran, he reached the enemy bunker. Once he reached the enemy bunker, 
all our Indian soldiers were lying down and watching him. So this man reaches the bunker, he takes out his rifle, cocks it, and he starts firing at the bunker. Now, anyone knows that firing at a bunker is of no use. A bunker wall is so fat, what will a rifle bullet do? This man stood there pointing at the bunker. He fired 11 rounds one after the other, emptied his gun, and then didn't know what to do. So he took his rifle like a stick and he started hitting the bunker with it. The rest of the Javans, the Indians were staring, looking, oh God, what, what is wrong with this man? What is going on? Then someone screamed from behind saying, throw a grenade, you idiot, throw a grenade. Now when you reach a bunker, the bunkers are not so fat, the walls. They have something called loopholes, small windows, they're called loopholes, from which you put your gun barrel out and you fire. There are two ways to destroy a bunker. Traditionally, either you fire a rocket launcher into the bunker, or you take a grenade and throw it inside the loopholes. Then it will blow up. Everyone inside will die. So everyone started screaming, throw a grenade, throw a grenade. So this man paused, broken rifle in his hand, looks around, oh, grenade, yes, yes, grenade. Took the grenade and he threw it inside the loophole. Straight inside. Okay. This enemy, as Colonel Dragon said, was very, very intelligent. This enemy had cut a channel inside the bunker, wherein if you throw anything, it comes out right at your feet, like a small ball. Okay. The Indian Army, at least when I was serving 20 years back, used two kinds of fuses for its grenades. We used seven second fuses and we used four second fuses. So this boy of ours, he takes out his grenade, he throws it over there and he crouches next to the bunker for it to blow up. And all of our boys were watching and they saw the grenade come out and fall right next to his feet. So every one of us in our heads was counting. That night we used seven second fuses. So you counted seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one Indian has reached it and he's useless, he's about to die. Two, one, zero. Suddenly someone shouted, you idiot, take the pin out before you throw a grenade. <laughs> this man had forgotten to do that. Suddenly he looked, oh, grenade, pin, wow, put it back in. Everyone starts shouting, what are you doing? But no use, because if he throws it back in, will again come out. A wave of complete frustration, very similar to what we face in our daily lives, especially principles. A wave of total frustration went over the Indians who were lying pinned. They couldn't move. Daylight was not far away. They are inside enemy territory. No food, ammunition running out, no movement forward, no movement backward. One guy is there and he's an idiot. What do we do? At that moment, that Jawan did something which is not taught in any military manual anywhere in the world. This man, with all his courage, reached into the loophole of the bunker with his bare hands, caught the barrel of that heavy machine gun, Browning machine gun, the BMG, as it was firing. He caught it, started screaming and very violently moved it, very violently. When he moved it, the BMG was standing on a tripod inside the bunker. There were three Jawans inside the bunker, enemy Jawans, who were manning the BMG. So the three of them inside the bunker were struggling for balance and this guy was moving the barrel. You know how a tripod is, it is by nature unstable. So one of the legs folded. As one of the legs folded, the gun's aim went, the barrel went up, and suddenly the fire was lifted. Now when that fire was lifted, the three soldiers inside the bunker struggled to get it back. But those brief seconds for which the barrel went up was all that the Indian soldiers needed. That was the only window, the only gap that was required Instantly our Jawans got up, they pounced, they charged and they crossed 
this 50 to 100 meter gap, they pounced upon the enemy who was waiting. The enemy was a very determined, motivated, professional enemy that fought the best they could. Our Jawans, equally fitted, equally motivated. What happened for the rest of the night was a terrible, violent battle which lasted till early morning. No one asked for mercy, no one gave any mercy. By the wee hours of the morning, Finger, as it was called, earlier it was Ring Order, was captured by the Indian Army. Successfully. Thank you. Thank you. The enemy had been vanquished. Few of them were hiding here and there. What we call up as mopping up operations were going on. Daylight started to break out slightly. Captain Ais called up Colonel Dragon and he said, Sir, phase three also success. And for the first time ever, Colonel Bay, Colonel Dragon, said, congratulations, good job done. Okay, now all this was going on, and Captain Ice was walking around the top of the hill. And he happened to venture towards the left side. And he came across a bunker. Now everyone was dead or captured. And he saw the bunker where the BMG was. As he saw the bunker where the BMG was, Remember, it's just half light, okay? Daylight was just starting to come out. He saw that there was someone sitting near that bunker, even now. So hearing his sound, footsteps in the snow, whoever was sitting at that bunker looked up. And for the first time, I saw that that was Shaitan Singh. Okay. So I was so thrilled he said, I have gone against everyone's advice, taken this boy and look at him. We are alive today because of Shaitan Singh. So Stephen was so happy, he started shouting across while walking towards the bunker. Bunker was that distant. He said, Shaitan Singh, I am so proud of you. So Shaitan Singh was still sitting there. He said, thank you, sir. He says, I will give you I will give you I, I will give you a, I forgot what chakra he promised him, I think Paramveer chakra or something. He said, I will give you Paramveer chakra. Said, yes, sir, thank you, sir. Because of you, we are, we are alive today. Yes, sir, thank you, sir. Very well done, you are a brave boy. Yes, sir, thank you, sir. Say, Shaitan Singh, we have won. The battle is over, the enemy is gone. Thanks to you, why are you still sitting there? Get up, move around. And for the first time, he realized Shaitan Singh sat there, looked at him and he said, Saab, I can't move. I just cannot move. Do you know what had happened to Shaitan Singh? In the heat of battle, when he went and caught that gun barrel, it had already been firing for a long time. It was hot. Hot as in not red hot, it was white hot. It burnt through his skin. It burnt through his flesh. And then it stopped firing because the enemy was killed. But when the barrel cooled down, which takes a few minutes, when the barrel cooled down, it was welded, physically welded against his bone of his fingers. So Shaitan Singh had sat there the whole night with bare flesh and bone welded to a machine gun while everyone was running around killing each other. Now that was, we had to cut the gun barrel dismantle it and send him back to base holding that battle. Now this was 21st August 1991. How many years back? Many, many years back. Sorry? 26 years back. How time flies? 26 years back. Shaitan Singh got a Kirti Chakra for that operation. After that, he turned into the unit battle mascot. Whenever 19 Punjab had to go to battle anywhere, they always put Shaitan Singh in front. <laughs> and Shaitan Singh turned into a legend. Today, Shaitan Singh is a war hero. I met someone at breakfast today who is from Punjab right now. I don't know anyone here from Punjab just now? 
Okay, so oh, yeah, So Shaitan Singh was from Moga district in Punjab. He was a ninth standard fail. Two years later, when he came up for his retirement, he refused his retirement. He continued to serve till he had more than 30 years of experience. He retired as a captain. Today he is an honorary captain, Shaitan Singh. If you ever go to 19 Punjab, the unit, you will see their honor roll start with Shaitan Singh. And the first three names are Shaitan Singh. <laughs> and today he is a respected, feared, looked up to role model in his village, in his unit, everywhere. Everywhere. He is a different man. He is not the docile chai wala or the person who boils milk in your home. Okay? But why did I share this story with you? I have taken you out from normal school and taken you to a completely different environment. Why did I share this story with you? What is the connection between a 9th standard fail boy from Moga district Punjab who could do anything he wanted and us here in this audience? What I would like you to do is just take a couple of minutes, okay? Think about the entire incident I have just shared with you. By the way, I have purposely shortened it because I know we are short on time. So I made it a lot shorter than what it actually is. Take a couple of minutes. Just jot down for yourself a few learnings individual wise from this entire exercise. Okay? Whether it is Colonel Mirza Beg, whether it is Captain Stephen Albuka, or whether it is Shaitan Singh. Okay? Whether you talk about people labeling others, not labeling others, giving people opportunity without being stuck, facing your fear, overcoming it, being able to live with being labeled yet moving forward. So just take a couple of minutes, make a few notes for yourself and then let's discuss openly. Please go ahead. Shall we get started? Yes, no? Two minutes more? Okay. As an author, I have written about uh, 14 books so far, out of which one book is a commercial novel called Pride of Lions and it's being made into a Hollywood film soon. Um, one of the great, thank you, one of the greatest experiences I've had in my life is writing. And believe me, writing biographies is an eye-opener. Whenever you get a chance, please, write or read biographies. The kind of learnings that we can have from the simplest people next to us can be eye-openers. So even this thing is biographical about Shaitan Singh or Stephen. But we have so many learnings from it, it's unbelievable. Shall we get started? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Your hand is up. Can we get your mic? I love your personality, you're so dignified. You look like you're out of a movie scene. <laughs> Hollywood. Lot of people are turning around to see who I'm complimenting, so please stand. 
I think my voice can be heard. I'm Subina Shunglu from Kolkata, Shishi Academy. I felt the, uh, the labeling, yes. that moment when Shaitan Singh was labeled. Yes. And that was the turning point for him. He must have felt uh, sad that he hadn't done anything different than what he had to do as a, yes. as a Batman all these years. But yes. that moment which took him this time to move his hands from here to here to here, should I, should I not? Yes. That dilemma that he faced uh, was the, finally he overcame that uh, and he was, became the fuel that provided the courage. So eventually there has to be some failure, some disappointment in life to, to yes. push you to ignite the fire that lies within. So this yes. one point about Shaitan Singh that I dwelt on. Beautiful, Thank beautiful you. learning. I, if I may add to that, I would like to ask a question. I do this in some sessions. When you entered this room here today, where did you enter this room from? You would have, I would normally do this as QA, but it would take too long. You would have entered from the door, right? Anyone who tried walking in through any of these walls? No, nobody tried walking into the room from one of the walls. Why? Why? Why didn't anyone try walking through the wall? Let me answer that for you. The reason none of us tried to enter through the wall is because you can see the wall. You know it's there. You know it is solid. You know it is physical. You can see it. You're not stupid. Right? So you do the sensible thing. You walk in through the entrance. Now, here comes real learning for us. Reality exists within our minds. Whatever we decide is real, is real. Whatever we have as a perception or an opinion, that becomes reality for us, right? So just like you have these walls here around us, we have even more visible, even stronger, even more powerful walls within our mind. And just like this wall, you can see this, that wall in your mind. You can feel it, it's tangible. So why will you walk through the wall? So over the years, as we progress, we slowly build walls in our mind and then we never bother to walk through that. It could be something as simple as taking singing lessons. Slowly you say, I can't sing, who's going to sing? Age goes by, then, then that wall is so strong that you don't even explore it. Sports, hobbies, likes, dislikes. So coming back, you're absolutely right. We need to guard from walls in our mind. We need to be able to keep them low. Yes, there are quite a few hands. Yes, ma'am. Just a word, you're a fantastic storyteller. And Thank you. As teachers, we all need to buy that. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mrs. Padma Shri from Bangalore. I rightly agree with ma'am. And definitely, I feel that the, the trust that Captain Eyes on, had on Shaitan Singh definitely made all the difference when they went to war. Had he not had the trust and he would have gone with the view of the other Jawans, definitely this would not have happened. And we should give opportunities and uh, I do believe that being in this profession as principals, we always advise our parents that the parents get very happy when there is success yeah. for the students in whatever field it may be. But they tend to appreciate and be by the side of the child when failure comes. So that's what we would like. Thank, Thank you, sir. Yes, I can see many, yeah. many hands. Yes. Please. Yeah. So uh, uh, I would uh, like to talk about the Stephen L. Booker. Yes. I like the way uh, he was building synergy. Yes. He was uh, thrashing out what were the points that need to be taken into consideration. He was having a common understanding with the new team that he was leading. Yes. And he turned his uh, lack of knowledge of the team into his, into his yes. Lovely. Into Thank an opportunity. So this is uh, something I felt everywhere he was strategizing. He was actually discussing with his team members, also reporting to the uh, top boss asking his advice. Yes. And I think that is the right balance right. I learned from Steven. Thank you. There's someone behind you. We'll move to this side. Oh, good, afternoon. good afternoon, sir. Excellent exposition. Thank you. Uh, I feel that when all the Jawans objected 
to select ship and sail. Yes. Captain Ice had the courage to take the right decision. Yes. Now God are appreciating Captain Ice for the success because Shaitan Singh took the risk and he uh, intervened and there was success. Yes. Suppose because of a blunder or a wrong decision, suppose there was failure for Indian Army, yes. there would have been blame on Captain Ice for yes. selecting Shaitan Singh. Yes. Therefore, as a leader, we should be ready to take risks seven okay. times. We have to take the decisions. It's Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm here this side. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jaya Nagarajan from Kerala. Now, I felt here, my, that I agree with all those who have spoken, but one important thing I feel is yes. the ignorance. Ignorance is bliss. He okay. didn't know that the grenade had to be, maybe the pin had to be taken out. He threw it and that saved his life. And uh, he didn't know maybe the PMG or whatever you mentioned was so hot, molten hot. So ignorance saved him there. And uh, he threw all rules to the, the wind. That's what I okay. Yes. Good afternoon. I'm Good afternoon. Oh, there. Okay, sorry, I'm being assaulted. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I'm an army wife. Sorry? Okay, you're I'm an army wife. That's why you have a target here. No, that is not the reason for this. So I could relate very well with what you said. I could visualize, I could feel the tension. Okay. At the same time, now as the principal of a school for the last 22, 23 years, I feel the right guidance at the right time, the right motivation at the right time, turning back to your leader for guidance. All those things helped Help. the situation. Okay. And also about batmen, I personally feel that they are also sent for training. They okay. are not doing only the domestic work. They are also right. trained at the same time with the others. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm the side, the right side. Yeah, so the side. Yes. On your right side, sir. Right side? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yashmi Burhani from MSP Education Institute in Dawn. Okay. What I felt, I thought of the leadership part of it. I appreciate the colonel for choosing the guy to be your soldier in spite of the fact that everybody is saying he's just a batsman. And you know, and appreciate the batsman, Shaitan Singh, for taking the risk, the courage, because he was an honest person. So what he did as a batsman, whatever he did, the duty was allotted to him. He did it very well, yes. focused. Then he thought, why not if I make it to the opportunity as well? Yes. He thought, and risk taking, he stepped out of his comfort zone, though others were advising him against that. But still he thought, I should, I should, you know, what I've come for, I should take that first. Yes. And he took the risk, and again he showed his honesty with his work. And Fine. he tried to put in whatever so. he thought was best, and in the end he ended up, you know, getting victory for the side. Okay, thank you. Sir, yes. over here, left, left hand side. Okay, this side, sorry. My name is Nathan Williams and I'm the principal of Bluebells Public School, Chasi. Uh, sir, it was just a passion and the focus what two, two heroes had yes. in the life and above all, patriotism. Total commitment. commitment. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, this is Mr. Gajanan Zuji from Arj International, Aurangabad. Hello. Uh, what I feel is, of course, uh, as a uh, couple of participants also say that it's because of leadership. I do agree with them. First of all, I think the work done by Captain Dragon is quite crucial because he put trust in uh, Captain Ice. And he recognized first of all the qualities of Captain Ice and felt somewhere that Captain Ice was the right person who could lead the entire team towards success. Yeah. So as a leader, understanding the qualities of your colleagues, your subordinates is quite essential. and. Similarly, in the field of teaching also, I feel a principal and even a teacher is first of all a leader who understands um, students, his colleagues very mm. well, finds out their qualities and accordingly just tries to build up leaders in future. And of course, uh, judging situations and taking decisions accordingly also is quite crucial in this matter. So be it a battlefield, be it even a school. Everywhere, of course, it matters. So I think these two things made a lot of difference. Thank you. Hello, I'm this side, on your left. Yeah. Uh, we all forgetting the fact that Shaitan Singh joined the army to serve the nation. And in all this, when he joined the army to serve the nation, 
his whole dream got shattered over nine years because people branded him as a sepoy who would boil milk and run errands. So his dream being shattered, I'm correlating it to a classroom. When we have 40 children in a classroom, we brand certain children and don't give them that million dollar chance. And here Shaitan Singh was given that chance. So he took every opportunity of the chance and he showed what he had within him, which was never given a chance. So what was his inert became his external and he served the nation. And because of Shaitan Singh, victory was won. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, just a moment. I think I'd like to save the captain from the assault. Now, now, now you know, we have another session coming after this. Please be... We'll just uh, wind up. Maybe we can take. Sir. Okay, we'll sir, take. One more view, sir. We'll take two more questions then. I'm one, sure. And then one more. I'm sure what I want to say Good might afternoon, be. Good afternoon, sir. What I want to speak about is that one-on-one -on -one session that I had with all his people. Yes. And I think that was the turning point. That was. The that gave a purpose to Shaitan Singh. Right. And if we practice this, I think we can change yes. lives. Thank you. Uh, sir, Thank you. Uh, this side, sir. Uh, okay. I feel that uh, all the three. Th that's the uh, last question, please. Yes, sir. Please take that. Sure. The colonel, the captain, and Shaitan Singh, they were all driven by the same motive of uh, conquering the, the peak. Yes. So I think that if we all are online, so things become easy. The principal, the management teachers, and that was the main thing, motive which drove everyone to trust each other. The trust and the recognition of everybody's talent is very much needed for all of us to work successfully towards happy school and happy children. Right. Vision alignment. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this is the last. I just want, don't want to ask any question or any statement. I just want to congratulate you. You have been really wonderful. You were a soldier in action here also. The way you were moving, your gestures, everything. And let me tell you, when you were narrating this incident, my husband was also posted there. Oh. He has been a major general in the Indian Army. Oh. That time he was a major. He was posted in Punch, Akhtur district. He provided the medical cover. So he came home and uh, for all the night, he narrated this incident to me. But that time, you know, I was moved. But the way you have told, you are a very good storyteller. <laughs> Not my children, all night we were away, all night we were up. But the way he has told, and I'm very glad, very proud that Indian Army has trained. Thank you. Captain, Captain, the best. Captain the best. at last, uh, the urge to search is what you taught us. Thank you so much, you are a very clever captain. And uh, all the three characters were wonderful, but Shaitan was a knowledgeable guy. Even though he worked as a Batman or whatever, he was into all the adventure stories. He would have heard a lot about things and that is how he would have reacted when the situation came. And wonderful captain, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. That's the last. If I may, if I may just wrap up, what I'd like to say to you is, first of all, thank you for Excuse being me. such a... Excuse uh, me, sir, may I, may I, may I just one? First thing there, hearty congratulations and compliments for you for sharing this thrilling session here. Thank you. First thing, only the message which I got from Shaitan Singh is this one. Please, please don't underestimate anyone. Yeah. It is a message to the teachers and the principal. You may find slow learners, excellent boys, brilliant boys, but please don't underestimate the students even. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, so now to wrap up. When? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, to wrap up, first of all, let me please thank you for being such a wonderful, wonderful audience. Thank you for being such warm hosts. But most importantly, let me please thank you from the bottom of my heart for being the crystal that's going to shape tomorrow's generation. You, every person here in this room, you are actually the last line of defense for this country. Because you are the ones who are manufacturing, shaping, and creating our next generation. What you put out 
is our future. You are obviously doing brilliant, such a vibrant audience. I didn't expect this kind of a vibrant, lively audience. I expected a little more. <laughs> yes. But thank you so much. It's lovely to see so much energy and you have my undying gratitude. My phone numbers, email ID, website, everything is on screen. Please feel free to call anytime, always at your service. It's a delight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.